Hörsin chan som sig ju också det the deadly traps of the Vietnam war but are not good enough. Yes I watch few videos from good enough it's like Samonella inspired channel let's just say but it's different in its own way it's like his animations are really horrific sometimes a lot of times. But this is an interesting video because it's about Vietnam war. Now I watch some Vietnam war videos. Uh, one of the videos like sounds of Vietnam war which is like one of the famous video on my channel. Uh, obviously sounds of World War 2 and sounds of Vietnam war. Now Vietnam war was so intense and uh, so psychologically driven that all the things uh, that I watched and read about it is just like next level, right? Especially those like ghost sounds and things like that where US literally tried to panic a uh, Vietnamese uh, you know uh, what Viet Cong what is it called uh, North Vietnam right uh, you know try to panic them into basically surrendering or something like that so i'm guessing deadly traps shenanigans here would be like next level and when i say shenanigans of course they're going to be like horrifically deadly but we'll see 9 to 1 so 9 is just scary simple thing small thing just scary one is horrific if you're not dead you wish you were dead type of way so it's going to be interesting let's watch it Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So you know that way you can help this channel by helping the algorithm. I watch different type of videos a lot. Uh, you know, it's like I don't know any genre or something like that. I just whatever I like, I basically react to, try to react to. But recently, I've been watching more, more like military, military history, geopolitics type of videos a lot. Obviously, I try to watch like you know like usual internet history and things like that whenever they're out. Like uh, you know, video game uh, from Maxer and sets and tech things like that. But usually, I watch like uh, military and geopolitics type of video. So if you really like my reactions like that, uh, you know, definitely like and comment. You know, that way you can help the algorithm, I guess. And yeah, let's watch this one. Let's start with the scary and slowly work our way towards the most horrific traps on the list. Number nine, the exploding motorcycle. During the Vietnam War, motorcycles were strategically placed in cities and villages that were predicted to be invaded by U.S. soldiers. The motorcycles were carefully rigged with a... Okay, I, what is with the cow? Okay, I get it, that stupid animals, I understand, but look at that. Those two legs look like stick and I don't even know if there's a leg in the back. What is this, like Fallout version of cow? What is this? Fallout version of cow does exist, like two heads, but still, look at that. Explosives. And once a person got on top of the bike to ride it, it would ignite the trap causing severe damage or even death. Now, I can't imagine that this tactic worked for very long, as there are only a few sources online that even mention it. Either way, I'm sure that they figured out that stealing and riding a bicycle was probably the better choice. While we're on the subject of rigged explosions, I might as well cover rigged trophies. The Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army quickly discovered that American soldiers loved to show off. When US soldiers took over an enemy base, one of the few things that were worth of any value to them was the enemy's flags. The salty communist army began to rig their flags with explosives, causing them to explode once they were picked up. But it didn't stop there. They would basically rig any item that they thought a US soldier would be interested in. Now thankfully, the communist army weren't bright enough to rig boxes of pizza and the Beatles records, as the US would have surely lost the war. Number 8 the rubber band grenade yeah okay flag thing i guess like flag is like symbolic like okay if you take down your flag and put my own like i have this area right now at least that's what i get from video games but it's symbolic mostly so it kind of makes sense the rubber band grenade was a deadly jump scare that was used by both the Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army. This booby trap was easy to make and was also very effective. They would simply take a hand grenade, pull the pin out, hold the lever down, and place some rubber bands on the lever to keep it compressed. They would then hide the grenade in their huts, like an easter egg. This was done since they knew that US soldiers regularly burned their huts down, preventing them from returning. But for US soldiers, this practice would soon come with a massive risk, since huts were booby-trapped with these hidden grenades. And once the hut was set ablaze, the rubber band would begin to melt, causing the lever to spring open, igniting the grenade and exploding, sending deadly shrapnel flying in all directions, up to a radius of 35 meters. Now a similar tactic all right look man i know few things about rubber band because you know i do for logistics and purposes i use rubber bands for paper and things a lot of things right so one thing i know about rubber bands is after a few time few month or whatever i don't exactly remember that uh, you know timeline but after certain times those bands degrade degrade a point it becomes like liquefy or something just sticks to the surfaces it's no longer a rubber band 
So I hope they are basically changing those bands over time and not just putting that and just like, oh, there you go, booby trap, there you go. Even if three months after somebody comes, no, it will degrade and you, it will just explode on you. So I'm guessing they basically whenever they feel they're threatened, that's when they create a booby trap or something. Because bands are not reliable like that. They would degrade very easily and just like, yeah. But yeah, that is insane, right? Uh, I expected this video to be like, you know, US, uh, you know, US military doing all these scenarios. I didn't know like Vietnamese, you know, fired back like that, but there you go. Tactic that is used today is the mason jar grenade, where a grenade has the safety pin removed, then placed inside of a glass jar with the lever held down by the wall of the jar. It is then dropped from a drone, causing the glass to shatter and the grenade to explode shortly after. Now, thankfully, nowadays this operation is performed by a carefully selected professional, which of course are all retired Call of Duty players. Since they have years of experience performing under extreme pressure and handling an Xbox controller. Number seven, foot traps. There were a few types of foot traps that were used during the Vietnam War, all which were very painful and could potentially turn deadly. Since these traps used nails and stakes that would typically have the razor sharp tips covered in poison or venom. But if neither of those could be found nearby, poop and urine would be the next best option. One of the most common foot traps consisted of a set of 2x4s that had long nails on one end. And when a soldier would step on the- I guess this is the closest thing to biological warfare that can be. Killing you with basically diseases and germs. Because this can be deadly, especially in Vietnam, like those jungle type of environment that you always see. Right? When you think of Vietnam, you always see like jungle environment, somebody like drops from some Apache helicopter or something. Yeah, this is like ripe for germs and diseases. So if you get injured like that, gangrene and God knows what. From the center of the boards, they would swing open, causing the side with the nails to tightly clamp down on the person's leg. Now another popular method was to simply dig a hole, place some stakes inside of it, get the poop guy to cover the tips, and then covering it with a thin mat and some foliage. When a soldier stepped on the booby trap, they would simply fall through the mat and puncture their foot which has to be one of the most annoying and disgusting traps. Since you were left to suffer with the agonizing pain of a wet sock. Now, sometimes the spikes were even set up pointing downwards. So when a soldier's foot went through the mat, they would instinctually pull their leg up to avoid the trap, latching themselves onto the downward spikes. Eventually, the communist army began to see just how effective these traps were. So, they began placing grenades inside of them as well. Number 6. The Cartridge Trap Another foot trap that was heavily used during the Vietnam War was the Cartridge Trap. A very simple to make booby trap that consisted of a wooden board, a nail, a piece of bamboo, and a 50 caliber cartridge. It was then placed underground and covered with a thin mat and some foliage. Now as terrifying as this trap was, it at least got a cute little name. The Toe Popper which actually makes it sound kind of pleasant. This trap was strategically placed on walking trails or in areas where US soldiers were predicted to pass through. And when a soldier stepped on the booby trap, it would press the cartridge down onto the nail, causing it to fire the round of ammunition into the soldier's foot. 50 caliber? Oh! Oh man, that's just too fucked up, not gonna lie. You have a hole in your foot that's not going away. You, I don't know, man. This is all right for like, you know, disease and gangrene, right? People really don't realize like how, you know, weak we are, right? How, you know, like weak our body is, especially in an environment like this. If you have like serious injury like that, infection is the first thing. I get like, you know, they, you know they'll have like antibiotics and things, but what if they don't have supplies? What if in that position where there is no supplies or you have to go certain place for supplies? It might take few days few days is too much for us if we have certain type of disease and we wait three four days we might be at a level we, we need to go to icu or something right it depends this is just after up man 50 cal that's too much sending all the little piggies to the market not only did this trap heavily damage a soldier's foot but it also served as an alarm inherently turning this trap into an easy ambush Number five, punji stick traps. This next trap is some. This is the food thing also reminds me like, what if you like walk in a way that like you're very careful walking and you're not putting your foot ahead that much. 
So you, when you put your foot, your body is like completely straight. So there is a chance bullet might go straight through you, basically killing you instantly. That's just fucked up, right? Shooting from below, that's just fucked up. Something straight out of an Indiana Jones film. The spiked pits were a terrifying booby trap that were generously placed throughout the dense jungle of Vietnam. This would fall under punji stick traps and is very similar to the foot traps we covered in the number 7 spot. Except a lot more gruesome, deadly, and terrifying. Instead of setting up razor sharp stakes to impel the foot, they were now designed much larger and made to puncture the entire human body. Another common tactic used by the communist army was planting punji sticks in high grass. They would set these up at choke points where they could ambush US soldiers and their allies. You see, when a soldier began to take fire from an unknown location, they will instinctually die for cover in the tall grass and impelling themselves on the hidden stakes. Number four, the snake pit. Now, as if the spiked pits were not terrifying. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie that, uh, you know, uh, jumping to prone position and putting spike on grass, that is some next level shit, right? Oh, wait a minute. As soon as we fire, they're gonna jump into the grass. What if we put spikes there so they just impale themselves? This is like thinking much ahead type of way, right? Like you've been into war, you know how people, you know, like react to things and you try to adjust accordingly, right? Which other wars have this kind of like, uh, you know, like adjustability, let's just say, right? Like adaptation of things. This is insane. I'm pretty sure I've never heard of things like this. It's like, is this Vietnam war exclusive or something? Enough. The Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese army would take it too far when they began to add deadly vipers inside of the pits as well. Which we can all agree is cheating. The communist army would also begin to conserve the stakes, digging deep holes and just... Basically anytime you play Assassin's Creed, right? Uh, especially like Origins or Odyssey, they're kind of... And when you go to Crypt and there's a snake, they're like... You have this like, what the fuck? You didn't need to put them there. There's a frustration there. Imagine that in real life, especially in situation like this. Filling them with the deadly snakes. One of the most common snakes that were used was the yellow-bellied bamboo pit viper. But US soldiers would know it by a different name, the two-stepper, implying that after receiving a bite, you would only take two steps before dropping dead. Now, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but nonetheless, the snake was definitely lethal. The communist army mixed and matched all of their trap. Yeah, this, the, this is the type of snakes where like venom it depends on where you're bitten, right? If it gets to your bloodstream, you're fast, you're dying, basically. That's, that's, not, that's not funny, right? You, you basically, like, when you're raised up, right? You've seen certain things like, in, I don't know, TV shows, movies, or cartoons or whatever. When you get bitten, like, people panic and try to suck out venom or something. The whole reason behind that is, like, you, they have to make sure it doesn't enter the bloodstream. As soon as it does, like, chances of you surviving goes really down. Even if you, like, somehow survive, your organ damage and things like that and were willing to try just about anything to see what would work. Holes with stakes. Holes with snakes. Holes with grenades. No holes, just poop on stakes. Holes with poop stakes and snakes. Snakes with stakes. You get the point. Number three, tripwires. One of the most terrifying and paranoia inducing traps involved the use of tripwires. There were many traps that used the tripwire method, but I'll just cover the most common ones, starting with the can grenade. The can grenade consisted of a grenade, a can, and a piece of wire. The grenade would have the safety pin removed from it and placed inside of a can, with the can wall holding down the lever. A piece of wire was then tied to a base, then to the grenade, creating a tripwire. And when a soldier Basically claymore, right? That's what claymores are. Uh, those uh, tri tripwire mines. I don't even know what they are, but claymores, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure every anybody who played Call of Duty, old Call of Duties at least. I don't know about the new Call of Duty. I don't play that. But like World at War and things like that. The old one, Modern Warfare. You know claymore, right? I'm pretty sure Clarkson also used that to blow up a cow in Australia. But yeah, claymores basically. This is something like that. But how would that work on grenade? Doesn't grenade have a certain time before it goes off? So as soon as you click, you know the grenade f just fell. You, you have time to run away, right? Because grenade have like certain time before it explodes. Soldier would hit the wire, the grenade would be pulled out of the can, releasing the lever and igniting the grenade. 
Now these tripwires were also commonly hooked up to crossbows, which of course shot arrows that had the tips covered in feces. Another tripwire trap that struck fear into the- Okay, like, feces thing is going out of- Like, you don't need feces on a crossbow. Now it's like too much, alright? Let, let, let's just chill out, right? Let's just chill out. They're like, why not? It's like, it's like you're playing a video game and you're suddenly like poison. Why not cover every single weapon into poison? It's just extra damage. No, there's a limit. Let's just chill out. The hearts of soldiers was the mace. This was a large, heavy swinging ball that had wooden or metal spikes sticking out of it which would swing down from overhead and slamming into the person who hit the wire. But wait, there's more. There was also- The real photo is horrifying, man. I didn't, I didn't like that one. Not a one bit. That's just like, that's just like deliberately trying to make something crude and fucked up. So the bamboo whip. This was a bamboo stick that had one foot spike sticking out of it. The stick would be pulled back between trees and held with tremendous tension, tied with a simple catch that would release when someone hit the tripwire, which would send the spike bamboo flying directly at the person. There was also another trap called the raft. So basically when you play Skyrim or something and you tripwire and like that thing swings down and everything, that's not far-fetched, people actually do that shit. This was a large, heavy wooden block that had razor-sharp spikes sticking out of it. And when the wire was hit, the wooden block would fall from out of the trees and impelling the soldier's head. Number 2. Landmines Landmines had to have been the single most terrifying traps that were used during the Vietnam War. Especially the click sound, right? As soon as you step on a landmine, there's a click sound, right? Wait a minute, how many landmines are there? There's a landmine, if you put a foot on it, right, it's not gonna explode. But if you, as soon as you take your foot off, it's gonna explode. I'm pretty sure there's also landmine, as soon as you touch your foot, it's gonna explode, right? So that many different type of ways, is that what it is? To put into perspective just how deadly and fear-inducing they were, we just have to take a look at one statistic. It's estimated that a third of all marine casualties were caused by mines and explosive booby traps. Now, just imagine the levels of paranoia you would have with every single step. You hit a twig, you drop and roll. You hit a pothole, you drop and roll. You hit a weed, you begin to question what you're even doing in the jungles of Vietnam and slowly come to the realization that war is nothing more than a racket where a handful of wealthy people get even more rich as they trade human lives for insane profits. But of course, all your boys will tell you to just take a deep breath, drink some water, and sleep it off. Now, one of the most common... Yeah, you know, basically that's what is called prison. Fucking wall tech, man. I watched that show recently, uh, Fallout. Loaded. I was surprised that I actually liked it, right? Especially the end. Questionable end for me because they're going to New Vegas apparently in season two. Like, okay, anything they do might be like... I don't think there's any good ending to that. Anything they do, even if they do well, people are going to pissed off about it. Because New Vegas fans, like me, are too hardcore. Anything they change, people lose their shit, right? I mean, Sadie Sands with Fallout 1 and 2 is like, okay, fine. Like, too old of her fans. Like, there are very few of them. New Vegas fans, there are a lot of them. Right, so that's gonna be a problem. But yeah, basically that, that concept, that concept comes from Vietnam War and things like that. Like what is, uh, you know, what is the song, War, what is it for, basically it comes out of around this time, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so something like that. So people are really questioning around this time, like why the fuck are we fighting this? And it's like, this war was kind of like indirect war. War against like, uh, you know, communism. But technically US was invading Vietnam, Vietnam was fighting back, right? That was technically the thing. So people back home in US were like really questioning like, why are our people dying again? So this is the thing, right? And every time you see any movies or something, right? What is that? Tropic Thunder? Right? That uh, you know, comedy movie starring a lot of people, even Tom Cruise, right? Robert Downey Jr., people like that. Uh, they, they, also, there is like, you know, whenever somebody step foot, there's always a landmine or something. So landmine was kind of like a famous thing around Vietnam landmines that the communist army used was the DH-10 directional fragmentation mine, which was over a foot in length and weighed over 30 pounds. The DH-10 unleashed fragments up to 200 meters and was commonly rigged with tripwire. As for the unlucky soldier that hit this wire, well, I'm not so sure just how much of him would be left. But one thing I am sure of is anyone that witnessed this trap in action would never be the same after seeing it. Number one, the 
basically fall out in real life that trap would literally explode heads and bodies right there would be gore everywhere they would be what the fuck yeah the ptsd is real there was a lot of ptsd out of this war vietnam war rat tunnels the rat tunnels were easily the most terrifying traps the Viet Cong ever created this was not just a trap this was more of a horror movie you see, the rat tunnels were an extensive and complex network of underground tunnels that served many purposes. They were also so small that once inside, it would be impossible to turn back around and made clearing them out a solo mission. For the communist army, these tunnels housed their rest area, kitchen, ammunition, water, and first aid stations. But for the US and its allies, these tunnels were nothing short of a horrific nightmare. You see, the tunnels were pitch black, requiring you to hold a flashlight and only allowing for a pistol in your other hand. As you begin to slowly crawl through the tunnel, bats will be flying past your head and rats and bugs running and crawling past you. But soon, you inevitably come to a junction where you could continue going straight, make a left or a right. You might not know it at and also like Americans are bigger uh, in physical size compared to Vietnamese or Asians in general, right? So I'm guessing these tunnels accommodate Asians, Vietnamese. So for Americans, average American soldier, these tunnels would be really smaller. So what is the phobia? Like claustrophobia, yeah, right? Anybody doesn't have that is going to develop that now, right? And you, you don't have that much movement. So even if you have to shoot something, how are you going to do that, right? Rats and things just like, no, a rat gets inside your jacket. How are you going to take, take the rat out if you're like, I don't know, man. That's just panicky situation as soon as I think it. This is insane, man. At the time, but a wrong turn here could be the last choice you ever make. As there are many false tunnels, tunnels that lead to landmines, spiked pits, ambushes and even areas where vipers are tied to the walls now you're probably asking yourself what soldier in their right mind would ever volunteer to go inside one of these hellish holes it turns out not many instead the platoon just became what it was fighting against communist sending in the shortest soldier in the platoon giving him a job that he never wanted now, don't get me wrong, the US and its allies did eventually put together a very small group of soldiers that would specialize in clearing out these tunnels. And when I say small... Okay, how did they become communist again? Well, forcing somebody to do something they don't want to? But again, that's the army. You follow orders regardless of what. As soon as you don't, uh, you're like defect or whatever. That's how army is, right? Doesn't matter how free you are, doesn't matter how democratic you are, that's the army, right? I mean, there was like a, you know, recent thing about, I don't know what it was, I exactly remember, right? Uh, about draft related things. Oh, okay, are women gonna get like drafted as well or something like that in the US, right? And people will be like, oh, this is not for me, this and that. And people are like, you do realize that this is mandatory, right? You have no choice. Once you have to fight, you can't say no, right? And in the military, you can't pick and choose. You have an order, follow it, or you're gonna get like, go throw in jail or get shot or something. Who knows, depending on the situation, depending how fucked up the war is. If war is really intense and they can't have resources, they probably shoot the defector at that point. They're not gonna jail the defector or something, right? Or anything who doesn't follow order. So people are real, you have, the freedom you have right now is, you know, based on all these wars, right? These wars are the one that gives you freedom. That's why people say these soldiers fought for your freedom. Because the people they are fighting don't want you to have freedom. That's the whole point. So during that fight, you don't have much of freedom. You follow order. So others can have freedom in your own country. That's the thing. You have a duty. That's why it's called duty. Being a soldier is not a job. It's a duty. But yeah, people, people really like mistake that just with their vanity. And the you know, like modern luxury that they have. Oh, I can pick and choose. No, not really. It's like, it's a war. All, I mean that literally and figuratively, as most of them were under five foot five. This small group of soldiers would come to be known as the Tunnel Rats. And throughout the Vietnam War, they proved to be some of the bravest soldiers to have ever fought, earning the respect and admiration from their fellow soldiers. And for once in their lives, they were not the ones 
looking up to others. Well, like Dig Dug, what is that? What is that game, right? It's Dig Dug, right? Where you can, you know, tunnel down. What is a? I don't even remember as a kid I played it, right? It's like NES game or something, right? Old Nintendo game, but Dig Dug. So basically, they became Dig Dug, you know, tunneling down, not to make a mistake. Otherwise, there's like an ambush, bomb, mine, or spike there. And they were somehow became effective. There you go. This was an insane video. I loved it. He should do more like this, like history, war related stuff rather than just general videos, right? Yeah, the deadly traps of World War One, World War Two, something like that. He should. People need to watch this video. So he his videos are usually like in millions or automatically. But this video should get like a lot of views. I hope he, he gets a lot of views on this video. So he makes more of it because this is the type of video that would be awesome. All right, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, comment down if you want to do more videos like this or not. Or any video that you want me to do, comment down the title or something. And yeah, I'll see you next time.